boys. Come here. Cover me. to sneak in without waking the kids. How is the second front? Yeah, Pop, how's the landing in Africa? Who are you? <laughs> oh, oh, you poor baby. Here I've been gone two years and you've already forgotten your old man. What did you bring me, old man? Yeah, yeah Pop. Pop. Yeah, what, what did you bring us? Oh, now there's plenty of time for that. Say, what are we doing here? Huh? All right, now, off to bed with you. We'll talk about everything in the morning, huh? Aye, aye, Pop. Aye, aye, Pop. Welcome home, sailor. That's good. That's very good to be home. Brand new fourth stripe. That means a ship of your own, doesn't it? What ship, Johnny? Well, it's a deep, top secret. I'm not supposed to know a thing about it, but the rumor reads maybe, perhaps, could be I'm getting the Hornet, the USS Hornet. We've dreamed of this for years. No, I can't help wishing it would stay a dream. For a while, at least. And then, just like you told the kids, we could have time. A lot of time together. We could get to know each other all over again. You'd be just a husband, and I'd be just a woman instead of a Navy wife. Maybe a couple of months. How much time do we have, Johnny? One month? A week? How much time, Johnny? Seven hours. Each one of you is ready and able to have your own carriers, but we have no carriers except these. We're building them, 70 of them. But until they're ready, some of you will have to be satisfied with teaching jobs. Because when the ships are ready, the men must be ready. Now, there were to be some reassignments today. Captain Hoskins? Sir? You were scheduled for the Hornet. Yes, sir. She was sunk four hours ago. 
Skipper. I've been assigned to an operation called USS Students. Well, who got the Hornet? Davy Jones, off the Solomon Islands a few hours ago. The old man offered me the desk next to his as his assistant. I told him I'd prefer sea duty. You know, with all he has in his mind, he took the trouble to show me the training problems and to show me how the new Navy has to be created on shore. It's... Necessary and honorable work, John. Yeah, yeah, but it's nothing to being out there where things are happening. How long have you had this naval heroes of the world? Oh, oh, years and years. Dad gave it to me when I graduated from Annapolis. He, uh... He thought it might inspire me to become a bright, upstanding, successful sea dog. The way you pack it in your gear and carry it around with you everywhere you go, it must be a pretty good book. Well, I'm kind of sentimental about my dad. I'll never forget how proud he was of his punk, dumb son from the Kentucky Hills becoming a naval officer, even, uh, <laughs> even though I did stand at the bottom of the class. What I was getting at is the inscription in the flyleaf. Yeah, his state is kingly. Thousands at his bidding speed and post or land and ocean without rest. They also serve who only stand and wait. Quotation from Milton. Dad put it there. Milton and your dad were wise men. Well, where do we go to serve where we stand and wait? Quonset Point, Rhode Island. I'm to be chief of staff to Admiral Cal Durgan. Thank you, God. Simpson. Mitsubishi flying boat. Hawk. That's a Zeke. Don't give them quite so much time, Dakin. Peterson. Zero. Frankovich. That's another Zeke. <laughs> the student who just answered, stand up. If you'd fired at that plane, you might have shot down your best friend or your brother, assuming you could have hit him. That's a U.S. Army P-47. I'm sorry, sir. Carry on. like your division fell two flights behind in navigation. We uh, lost Thursday to bad weather, sir. Let's make it up tomorrow, huh? But, sir, tomorrow is Sunday. These men are half dead. Mr. Johnson, a pilot who can't navigate back to his ship, is all dead. Squadron 7, low on dive, bombing and gunnery. Oh, if we could only make targets look like girls. <laughs> we'll finish this later. Yes, sir. Johnny, is Bill Burke, his wife, still staying with you and Sue? Yes. Why, did something happen to the Princeton or the Bill? No, nothing. That's the point. An information dispatch. The Saipan invasion is proceeding according to schedule. All carriers and men safe. Thought you'd like to let Dorothy Barker know when you got home tonight. I'll let her know right now. Doesn't often our poor badgered Navy wives get any good news. Hello? Dottie? Say, I got some good news for you. Now listen. Both the Princeton and the Skipper are doing fine. Oh, John, that's wonderful. Suey's safe. Bill's safe. Thank you, John. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. 
Thank the boss. He just came in with the news. Kiss Sue for me, will you? Bye-bye. Yeah, there ought to be a medal for all of them. All the service wives. Now my wife's going to have to start sweating it out. They're giving me a division, Johnny. Well, congratulations. Thanks. I asked for you as a skipper. Well, that's great. That's... No, they, they said no. They said you were too valuable here. Well, here I'll stay then. Thousands of miles from the only war I'll ever get to fight in. All right, boss. You fight him and we'll train him. Well, Johnny, looks a little better than it did two years ago, huh? Yes, it looks just as you said it would, sir. Men you trained are all out there. They're doing a superb job. We didn't give you this just for laughs, you know. What's next, sir? Well, of course, they'd, uh, they'd like to keep you at Quonset. Plenty more pilots to train. Or... I still don't have what I'd call a first-class assistant. Well, that's unfortunate, sir. Mrs. Hoskins! What's the matter? What happened? For you. What ship, sailor? Ah, <laughs> the Princeton USS Princeton. Oh, Johnny, that's wonderful. Yeah. Princeton's my bill ship. What's happened to Bill? Nothing, Dottie, nothing. Bill's fine. It's just a routine relief, that's all. Oh. Oh, I'm so glad I was worried sick. Oh, oh, Sue, I'm sorry. Well, what are we all standing around here for? This, this calls for a celebration. There's your lithium now, sir. Good. We should spot the fleet soon, huh? Uh, there they are. One of them's our Princeton. Walter, uh, tell the pilot to radio in and get us a boat to the Princeton. Right, sir. Excuse me, sir. There's a captain's gig approaching. Captain? Hmm. If it's all right, sir, I'll have him brought here. Sure, sure. Aye, aye, sir. Request permission to come aboard. Permission granted, sir. The messenger will show you to Captain Berger. As I see it, there are only two logical routes they can take to convert on Lady. Morning, gentlemen. This is Commander Riley. Good morning. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Bill. Good morning, John. Admiral Halsey, good morning, sir. Uh, Dorothy sends you her very best love, Bill. How is she? She's fine. Misses you terribly and can't wait to get you home. That's my Dorothy. Uh, what brings you out this way, Johnny? You got a ship. That's great, John. In our division? My orders. Purse doesn't know of our change of plans, or they wouldn't have done this. I'm sorry, John, you can't have the Princeton now. We're all pulling out at high tide for the invasion of Lady. The Philippines. I can't change commanding officers just before a campaign. If Bill doesn't mind his ship having two captains, you can stay aboard as prospective skipper and take over as soon as this operation's concluded. Thank you, sir. I'd be glad to take part in the operation as prospective skipper of Bill Burker's ship. Be seeing you, gentlemen. Bill, Dorothy does miss you terribly. Well, John, I guess if you'd had the ship almost a year and I was stuck behind a desk, I'd be glad to do the same for Sue. Thanks, Bill. Great ship, Bill. You've been over like a prospective bridegroom. Yes, except I don't know when I'm going to be allowed to marry the girl. Come left to 347. 
When we come out of this action, I'll give you a change of command ceremony that will go down the books. Well, I'm ready. So's Riley. Better hit the sack, John. You must be exhausted. Oh, prospective skippers don't sleep. They do if they know what's ahead of them, and I know. Keep it steady on 347. Good night, Johnny. Good night, man. Good night, sir. Good night. Just to try it on for size. Six of their planes with only one loss to ourselves. Your boys did a great job, Bill. Were you scared, Johnny? Frankly, yes. For your ship, too. Our ship, John. But it's only beginning. They're bound to come at us again. Well, so far, so great. Enemy plane, port quarter. <laughs>
Mr. Captain, how bad is it? Bad fires in hangar deck. Engineering plan operating, although conditions for personnel becoming difficult. Mr. Captain, all hands, topside. Ask the Birmingham Neo to stand in. Get everybody off, it doesn't have to fight fire, control damage, or man the guns. Aye, aye, sir. Important interest in this ship. Remember me, the next skipper? Johnny, I'm in earnest. Bill, please don't finish it. I wouldn't want the entire ship's company to see one captain disobeying the order of another. Jettison the ammo in the reserve bomb and torpedo storage because of the heat. Murderous. size for only 69 cents. Now, come on, stop fooling with the radio and sit down. It was the United States aircraft carrier, Princeton. For further news throughout the day, stay tuned to this station. Ma, it's something about the Princeton. Yes, I know, and it's time for your breakfast. Princeton? Did you hear the radio? Well, yes, just now, something about the Princeton. She was sunk. Yesterday. And it is now officially confirmed that although the Princeton was sunk, most of her crew, including her captain, have been saved. Just as soon as more information is forthcoming, this station will bring it to you. And now back to... Most of her crew and captain have been saved. Mom, the Princeton had two captains. Why didn't they say which captain was saved, Mom? Well, you better eat your breakfast. You'll be late for school. You're right, Doctor. It's definitely gangrene. How far is that hospital ship? Ulithi. Four days. We must shorten it. I'm not worried about saving the leg anymore. I'm worried about saving him. Ship gone, plague gone, career gone. War, my friend, puts a lot of good men on the beach to spend the rest of their lives dreaming of what ships they almost had. If you only lose to get on the beach, I'll settle for that right now. Uh, may I have permission to see the captain? He's still in a coma, lad. Oh, uh, well, may I leave these for him? All right. The 
Excuse me, sir. What's that? All that's left of your gear from the Princeton, sir. Who are you? Seaman Frederick J. Zugbaum, sir. The guys call me Zuggy. I'm the guy Captain Burke had told to get your gear when you refused to leave the ship. I, I, I'm sorry, sir, about your ship. And, uh... Well, thanks, Zuggy. <laughs> I, I would have gotten more, sir. Except the fire got so hot and... You got those burns saving my gear? Uh, back home in Mankato Pond, I got a little leather good shop. If you send this to us, sir, we'll do a good job on it. Algerian calf, if you like, sir. Or, or maybe Argentine alligator would be nice, too. You see, I, I'm told they're sending me home. The war's over. For me, that is. With those wounds? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that a crock, sir? Zuggy. What you did is one of the nicest things that ever happened to me. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I hope things will break better for you, sir. Son. Johnson? Lieutenant Johnson. We met at Quonson. Yes. I'm sorry, Len. Sure, Captain. Sure, everybody's sorry. But I'm minus an arm. Yeah, you're better off than I am. All you have to do is give away half your gloves. Cheaper than shoes. You said... You said the Navy was proud of me when they gave me my wings. Look. Look where my wings now. You did your best, son. Wasn't good enough. What good might anyone? Johnson. Just wanted to show you something. Before you started flapping around like a lame duck on the beach. The Navy was his life, too. I'm uh, afraid I didn't know very much about him, sir. Time you learned. You got a great precedent to live up to. Yes, sir, but... What about yourself? I guess I got a precedent to set. So I've been wanting every hour to come and tell you what little we knew. That he is alive, although he's seriously wounded. Thank God he's alive. Yes. Yes, but 
See, they were flying him back to the mainland. Flying him? Well, he insisted on it. Sue, the plane is now overdue. About 17... Captain Hoskins residence. What? Oh, for you dirty bluff and no good. It's all right, Sue. Hello? Hello, Sue. John. Johnny. Where are you? San Francisco. How are you and the kids? Oh, we're, we're fine now, John. Your voice sounds beautiful, sailor. But, but quick, tell me, how are you? I'm all right. Sue, you remember all the trouble I had with that athlete's foot? Oh, sure I do. But, but what's that got to do with how you are? Nothing except I got it all fixed up now. Oh, good. How, how'd you get rid of it? Easy. No foot. John Hoskins, you get straight back on that plane and, and come right home to us. Aye, aye, darling. destination was Washington? That's right. Honey, you tell the navigator he made a mistake. We're bound for Philadelphia. Yes, sir. Philadelphia? Sir, I still find no orders for a Captain Hopkins. The room will be above the sixth floor, on the south side of the building. Eighth floor. Thanks, Ensign. Naval medicine's getting awful pretty these days. Good luck, Captain Hopkins. All right, fine. Now, put the bed right over by the window. Beds are never placed by the window, Captain. You seem to have trouble hearing orders, nurse. Had your hearing checked lately? I'll send for the surgeon at once. The bed by the window. Thank you. got you and the kids. We'll make it up to you, John. There's nothing to make up. The Navy's given me a new leg. We'll make a whole new life together, darling. What's the matter with this one? Nothing now. Nothing ever was. Uh, nothing ever will be, either. <laughs> I never was much of a dancer, anyway. Philadelphia Naval Hospital. Admiral Halsey. If you don't mind, man, I can manage from here on alone. Come in. John, John, sit down before I knock you down. Yes, sir. I, uh... I'm sorry about this rotten business. Uh, how long will you be? Oh, I don't know. 
Depends on the carpenters and that peg leg they're making. Well, when they get done, you won't have a care in the world. Uh, except termites. <laughs> what do you plan to do? Oh, limp a little, I guess. I mean, after you're retired. Admiral Halsey, I'm not retiring. Uh, you better face it, John. They'll make you. Why? Does the Navy expect a man to think with his feet? That blast didn't blow off my head. What's eating you? Would you look down there, sir? I want the new Princeton. Good afternoon, Admiral. Bill, how are you? Fine, Admiral, fine. What brings you to Philly? Oh, just looking over something in the Navy Yard. When you get back to your desk, you'll find my memo telling you all about it, sir. But that's only one of the reasons. How's Johnny? Eh, you know, Johnny Hoskins says all he needs is a new leg and the new... a new ship. But, uh, don't discourage him now. Of course not, sir. Hurts, huh? Oh, no, it's a picnic. What next? Try a little more weight on it. What next? Few short steps helping with the crutches. That's all for today, Captain. You've got to take it slowly at first. Getting easier, isn't it, Captain? Yeah. When can I throw these sticks away, Doc? Now oh, you're doing fine, Captain. Let's not be impatient. Well, John, look at you up and about. Hello, Doctor. I am surrounded by the mentally defective. Of course I'm up and about, as spry and able, if not as beautiful as you, my gorgeous wife. <laughs> Say, let's go dancing, huh? <laughs> He's had a hard day, Mrs. Hoskins. An extremely difficult patient. I'll go very soon, Doctor. Thanks, Doc. You know, it's a great break we're getting, John. You'll be out and around in a few weeks. That's what the man says. I brought you something. Ah, good. Well, after all the trouble I went to, aren't you even going to look at it? Sure. All right, I looked at it. What's the matter? Something was spilled? I'm not a rear admiral. Well, it's automatic, John. After you retire, you'll be an honorary. Rear admiral. I'm not retiring. John. This is the only thing in our lives we haven't faced together, honestly. I didn't realize you were trying to face it for me. But everyone knows that it... Please! I can take it from everybody else. But I thought you knew me better. I'm sorry, John. I... The doctor did say you'd had a difficult day.
you miss, Mac, is that much longer the prison will be delayed. Kind of shook me, sir. We ain't ever had an inspector up here with, with them things on before. We're four sections ahead now, sir. Yeah, well, that's great. Keep her up, huh? Hey, Captain! You lose that at Lady? Yeah. You must be Captain Hoskins. You had the old Princeton. Almost. But this one is gonna be mine. Yours? Yeah. That's queer. Another captain told me the same thing the other day when I was working day shift. Who? What do he look like? I don't know what he looked like, but he was a captain just like you, sir. In all our life together, I can't remember one single forbidden topic. And now we have this horrible no man's land between us, and I hate it. Well, Sue, the facts of life are these. Unless something unforeseen happens, John Hoskins will become Rear Admiral, U.S. Navy, retired. I've been doing nothing but thinking about that ever since that dreadful evening we spent together in the hospital. But this is something new. Something's eating him that has nothing to do with his old ambition or getting his own command. I don't know what it is. But ever since he lost that leg, he's changed into somebody else. Somebody I've never met before. I don't know. There are no words for it. I, I just don't know. Sue, you've always dreamed of having a full-time husband, haven't you? And your youngster's having a full-time father. Of course I have. What Navy wife hasn't? But if a man's spirit's crushed, how good a husband and father could he be? You know, I found something that just might be the answer to your problem. It's a long-forgotten law in our U.S. code. Article 34, Section 271, and it says that no officer shall be compelled to retire because of disability received in combat with the enemy without his consent. Now, if you give this to him, it might just help keep him in the service, at least on limited duty. But, Sue, you must consider, I think, what a, what a desk job would do to him. Young men coming up, getting their first command, their first ships, that he never had or ever will have. I considered giving it to him myself, but I think the decision must be yours. Yes. But would this accomplish what I want? It could, when you decide what you do want. The medical board might show tomorrow put me through some personal fitness trial. You all right, Captain? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll get used to it. I wouldn't take that kind of punishment if it made me president. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Yeah. You speak to the foreman about that seat of my shower. He says the other captain doesn't want a seat until it's decided exactly who's going to be skipper. One more thing. What's more important is what about the bearings for the flight deck? What do he say about that? Oh, he says this is the strongest deck ever put on a carrier. It'll take anything to fly. Uh, maybe anything, but not jets. Jets? On a carrier? Exactly. We're going to need a much heavier deck. That's true, sir. Oh, I feel sorry for that guy. Seats and showers, jets on carriers, jets at the near two miles of runway. Oh, I feel sorry for him. Hey, Captain! Take it easy now, don't move too fast. Take it easy, go. We'll 
get you back to the hospital. Everything's going to be all right. And after all these months, he's still unable to walk without the aid of crutches. So I say, Admiral, with all this evidence, prepared by efficient members of the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery, proves conclusively that this review is a mere waste of time. I know, Captain. But the man has requested this hearing. He's entitled to it. Call Captain Hoskins. Aye, sir. Captain John M. Hoskins, sir. We've made a rather thorough investigation of the report sent in by your medical board, Captain Hoskins, and have been impressed, frankly, by their unanimous recommendation that you be retired. Now, do you feel that you have additional evidence favorable to you not included in their report? I do, sir. I feel that they've erred in their personal fitness findings. They seem to be under the misapprehension that I have a physical disability. As of two days ago, Captain, you needed crutches. That was two days ago. I'm sorry to see the Navy looking backwards. And I respectfully repeat that I am fit for sea duty. Captain, you realize with these crazy antics at the Navy Yard you told us about, you violated every regulation in the book. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Well, based on your testimony and the evidence submitted, this board... Admiral, uh, may I uh, suggest a short recess? We'll recess for 10 minutes. We'll call you, Captain. Yes, sir. Pretty hopeless, doesn't it? Yes, John, it does. Isn't there anything you can do? Yes, friendly advice. When the board reconvenes, don't wait for their decision. You announce your retirement voluntarily. It'd be much better for you, right? sir? Yes. This is for you, sir. Who sent it? I'm sorry, sir. I don't know. Captain Hoskins, sir? I'm ready. I believe Captain Hoskins would like to make a statement. Proceed, Captain. My statement, sir, is that this board or any other board does not have the right to retire me without my consent. And I do not consent. 
And, Captain, what is your authority for this unusual statement? Title 34, Section 271 of the U.S. Code contains a provision that no officer shall be compelled to retire because of disabilities received in combat with the enemy without his consent. And as I stated, sir, I do not consent. Bill, it seems to me I, I've heard of this law someplace. You'll be notified of the board's decision. Thank you, sir. I'll wait outside. No, that won't be necessary, Captain. This decision may take quite some time. Yeah. You're going to let me know sometime. Great. What goes that when they're launching the Princeton tomorrow? Not that it makes any difference to me now. Yes, it does. We'll be there at the launching. See Bill Berger get it? Look, sailor. Sometimes you, you win and sometimes you lose, but what's important is you've always fought a clean fight. All right, come in, come in. Hello, Sue. Oh, hi, Bill. How hi, are you, Sue. Dorothy? Hello, John. Hiya, Johnny. It's all over Washington. What a great show you put on for them. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to book me into the circus. I, um, I can follow the elephant act. Bill, did they tell you yet? About what? I'm out of it now. You can level with me. You're getting the Princeton, aren't you? The only Princeton I'll ever have are the pieces of deck still in me. I'm retiring, Johnny. Then you won't be at her launching either. We'll both be there. She's still a fine ship, and the Navy's still our Navy. Through power, our nation and allies have risen to world leadership. Through adherence to our ideals, we will maintain that leadership. Through belief, we will sustain our ideals. This ship shall be a pledge to the past and a prophecy for the future. Dodds. I'm sorry, Mrs. Dodds. We have to hold up the christening for just a moment. Forgive me, Mrs. Dodds, for stepping in so abruptly. And forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, for delaying the addition of this great ship to our growing armada. But I've been asked to make an announcement important to us all. By a decision of the Navy Department a few hours ago, the new commander of the Princeton has been appointed. It's my privilege to ask for a few words from the new Princeton's first skipper, Captain John M. Hoskins. of all Americans. I can and do promise that the captain, the officers, and the men of this ship will do all in their power to avenge the ship of the same name which was lost last October. 
This new Princeton will have more happy landings, a longer and more brilliant life, if she has the blessings of the courageous man who commanded the ship for which she is named. With your permission, sir, I dedicate this new Princeton to my friend, Captain Bill Barraker. shower. <laughs> All this in a shower seat, too. Your gear, Captain Hoskins, sir. Zuggy. Say, I thought you were back in... Uh, Mankato. In Mankato with your old man, a complete civilian. Well, I was, until I heard you got a ship. I re-enlisted. Well, welcome aboard, Zuggy. Thank you, sir. You made it all by yourself, huh? Oh, or did you? So, he worked his breeze on you, too, huh? <laughs> All right, Zuggy, put the bags in there. Yes, sir. White flag, land aircraft. Pilots, the uh, hot rod kids, I want to see them immediately. You, mister, you uh, came in like this. And you, Martin, you came boiling in as though something big, red, and hot were on your tail. Have you any explanation? Well, I came a little hot, sir, but the landing wires stopped me without any trouble. Yes. Yes, they did. But suppose, Lieutenant, instead of a simple old Hellcat, you'd been flying a plane that weighed 18,000 pounds in its landing configuration. Suppose, um, suppose you'd been flying a little baby like this. This gentleman is a modern aircraft, otherwise known as a Grumman jet. Now, either you men and the Navy will be prepared to cope with these, or we might as well label ourselves obsolete and give up right now. But the return to my question, Lieutenant. Suppose you'd been flying a plane like this. <laughs> well, I don't know anyone crazy enough to land a jet on a carrier. <laughs> Do you, sir? Well, that makes me crazy, then. Because you see, mister, I'm looking forward to taking off and landing one of these on a carrier. You, sir? With that leg? Yes, me. Peg leg and all. Uh, Do we have enough room on flight decks as we know them now, sir? Why not, if the arresting wires in the deck can be beefed up? And with 36 knots of wind over the deck, I can land jets on carriers. Of course, it'll take months and months of developing the right know-how. We might have to dream up a new kind of catapult to accelerate the takeoffs. In order to decelerate the aircraft, we'll probably need heavier arresting wires and perhaps even some kind of elastic barrier. Some of the wood in John's leg must have gone to his head. <laughs> How are we going to get jets? We've got no appropriation, and everyone's yelling economy. Other services are using jets, gentlemen. Are we part of the defensive team of this country, or aren't we? Well, what do you think we're doing? But why kill 100 pilots and lose millions of dollars worth of material, and then admit that we're licked? 
Four months and nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's the trouble with some of those desk jockeys around the Pentagon. They don't know what time it is. Come in. Excuse me, sir. Admiral's barge coming alongside. I take that back. This is it. Maybe. Johnny. Welcome aboard, Admiral. My exec, Commander Rodine. Commander? Riley. Welcome aboard, Walter. Morning, sir. You know the way, sir? Well, we were just talking about you, Admiral. I'd almost given up hearing from you again. I've been having kind of a busy time, John. Yeah. Well, you got your other stripe, Captain. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, what brings you out this way? Well, I... Uh... I know you got a ship. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, that's great, Riley. I always told you you'd make it. In our division, I hope. My order, sir. Mrs. Hoskins sends her very best love and... Uh... How is she? Fine, but uh, very lonesome. And... and she can't wait to get me home. Can the bull, Riley. I wrote that dialogue, remember? Yes, sir. Prepare for a change of command ceremony at once. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but there'll be a slight delay in spotting the planes. Delay? Why delay? We've had a perfect record of efficiency for almost a year. I'm sorry, well, sir. Well, no, 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 don't get upset, John. Riley can wait another few minutes. Well, yes, I, uh, I'd like to look around a little bit anyway, if I may. Sorry about this, John. It's it's the law of the sea. It figured, sir. All these months I knew I was living on borrowed time. I wrote Sue that this job was it. My last one, and I'd be home for good after this tour. I told her if that... you're always telling somebody something, always shooting off your big mouth. So? That letter about the jets, you certainly blew your stack on that one. That's why they beached me? Don't blame me, John. It was you who dreamed up this crazy notion to put jets on carriers. Now all you have to do is prove it. Me? Job is all yours. We're ready, sir. Very well. After several discussions, we decided we didn't have an insignia of sufficient inspirational value. So we got Walt Disney to dream one up for us. I hope, sir, that it meets with your approval. Sure, miss her. I doubt if you'll have time. You're gonna have a tough, tough fight before you lick this one, my ambitious friend. Don't worry, sir. And after the dry run phase is over, we'll have to try our techniques on the rolling pitching decks of carriers at sea. Carriers? You wouldn't be suggesting carrier division scale, Captain. Why not? We wouldn't fight unless. Looking for a promotion, Johnny? Oh, no. I'm going to have trouble enough explaining this one more job to Sue. No, sir. This is it. Oh? A little late. You made Admiral seven days ago. What'll I tell Sue, Tommy? Admiral Hoskins, sir, that's your problem. 
Actually, uh, San Diego isn't a bad little town. It's, it's got pretty good schools, lots of sunshine, and, well, the main thing is that we'd be together for months and months. You're talking too much, Captain. We'll be late for your own party. Will you help zip me up, dear? You know, I always get stuck with these things. Not with me, you don't. Last time I asked you to help me with the dress, zippers weren't even invented. Honey, I realize I, I haven't been home much lately. Matter of fact, I feel kind of like a heel because last time I said there'd be one more job, I, I promised. Well, this is really it. Just this one more job. After all, I'm a man who tries to keep his word. Sue Hoskins. When did you know about this? First day I met you. go as high as four. Well, it's essentially a supply problem. I'll have to find out. Excuse me, man. Looks like I've interrupted a full staff conference. No, we just about had it, Admiral. Haven't we, gentlemen? Yes, yes sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, I have a feeling if I hadn't come in, you'd have kept them up all night. Why not? A lot depends on tomorrow's demonstration. Yeah, about tomorrow, Johnny. Uh, you're going to be surrounded by friends and well-wishers, with one exception. Admiral L.D. Uh, yeah, I tried to keep him away, but he insisted yes, on... Yes, I, uh, I heard he'd been making some more of his wisecracks about my risking young men's lives trying to prove some crazy theory. Tommy, I want your permission to fly the lead plane tomorrow. I'm checked out on jets. I'm not bad, as a matter of fact. Yeah, the reply is no. But with L.D. sounded... Look, Johnny. You know, your reaction time is twice that of a kid at 25. We need you alive. So the reply is in the negative. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, about tomorrow, good luck to you. It's to you and Naval Aviation. Good night. Good night. Tragic as it may be, I feel we've established that today's crash was caused not by the requirements of landing in a confined space, but by a mechanical malfunction which could have happened anywhere. 
Therefore, I feel I should proceed to see a scheduled and begin actual carrier operations. I've said my piece. I can only repeat the heart of it. In a regular landing, that boy could have bellied in and might well be alive today. Admiral, at this stage in their development, jets are killers. There's no doubt about that. They're killers on land as well as on sea. That's the truth and it's rough. But the hard military fact remains that jets are the combat planes of tomorrow. How many men do you think the other services have lost in jet development? Did it stop them? No. Can we allow it to stop us? How many million Americans will be lost if we're not ready with jets when an enemy strikes? <clears throat> Admiral Hoskins? You will assume command of Carrier Division 3 is scheduled for aircraft operation at sea. On completion of carrier qualifications, you will join Admiral Strubel of the 7th Fleet at Manila Bay for a practical demonstration. Good day. We're all set, sir. Uh, looks like this is the big day, huh? Well, I hope our luck holds. The weather's right and the wind's right. Pardon me, sir. Admiral Struble's helicopter approaching. All right, son. Welcome aboard, sir. Thanks, John. Greetings. Admiral Hoskins. Captain Rodi. Admiral. Nice to see you again. Shall we commence the demonstration as scheduled, sir? Yes, take our distinguished guest to flight control. Admiral. Stand by to start engines. Stand clear, jet exhausts. Start jets.
Land aircraft. Admiral, go ahead and say it. I can take it. I've taken worse. <laughs> you got me wrong, John. I'm just trying to think of the words. The right ones. I'll tell you what I think about your demonstration. If there had been any doubts by anyone, I mean anyone, you've erased them. The future of jet carrier aviation is assured. Thanks, John, and congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. John, exactly what did you have in mind when you decided to take up the lead plane? Well, sir, my uh, boys were a little nervous, so I figured if they saw a tired penguin with a peg leg climb into the cockpit and take off, it would give them the little added courage they might need, just in case. Now I can go back to Washington and relax. Sit down. Thanks. Washington, eh? How long will you be gone, Admiral? Oh, sometimes these conferences go on and on. In the meantime, while I'm away, you're to take over the command of the 7th Fleet. Thank you, sir. John, it might be a good idea to give the Kremlin eyes in these waters a good long look at American jets operating off carriers. What do you think? This is 1950, and we're supposed to be at peace. This is Admiral Hoskins. As officer in tactical command of the 7th Fleet, I'm not being facetious. I remind you that we are now in peaceful Asiatic waters. Let each of us intensify our alertness and our readiness for the unexpected. Our mindfulness of security matters is especially stressed. Let's keep in consonance with the times. It may be later than you think. That's exactly what I told him, honey. It was much later. You never thought I was a prophet, but I caught the tide with that one. And we were ready to answer the bell the first hour of this Korean action. But now the Reds are really squeezing the nutcracker. Whether they'll push us off Korea or not remains to be seen. We were doing our best to cover the retreat. But now we must protect the Pusan pocket till enough supplies can be landed to give the army a chance to hold out. If not, Dunkirk. Our base is so far away that the fighters can only give about 20 minutes to each sortie. Then they have to hightail it for home. Exactly. And more often than not, the bases are socked in with fog even when the target areas are clear. We need you, Admiral, and your jets. I think we can help you, General. Johnny, this is your baby. You've got the ball. Yes, sir. Well, thank, thank you, Admiral. Thank you very much, sir. sir. Thank you. You gentlemen still so anxious to mothball the Navy? <laughs> oh, look, Johnny. That scrap was in Washington a long time ago. Let's fight this one here together. Roger. Say, is this a private war, or could you chaps use some help? We can use all the help we can get. It'll be war enough for all of us. Admiral, uh, are you aware, sir, that there's a typhoon building up between us and where we can be of help. I am. We'll stand down into the straits. 
In a typhoon, sir? Walter, between fighting in a typhoon and evacuating our army in a typhoon, let's fight. Aye, aye, sir. We'll concentrate here, the British here. This will be our sector from 265 to 355. Use F9Fs and ADs flying 10 degree sectors. Designated ships of our force will give gunfire support as indicated on called targets near coastline. Aye, aye, sir. Your plane's code will be Freddy. Gunfire commanders will be Devil Dog. Our base code will be... Excuse me, Admiral, but my... Uh, that is, our boys would like to have the base code Uncle John. Well, all right, if you want to butter up the old man, but I warn you, flattery will get you nothing. Well, almost nothing. Thank you, sir. The men will be pleased. Right. Have the schedule made up immediately. At 0400, we'll go to general quarters. Let's get some sleep. Go to general quarters. Aye, aye, sir.
Freddy. Hello, Freddy. This is Uncle John. Watch your fuel. You've been out a long time. Now watch your fuel. This is Freddy, fellas. Clear the air. Clear the air. Hello, Uncle John. Hello, Uncle John. This is Freddy. Hello, Freddy. Hello, Freddy. This is Uncle John. Attack completed. Enemy tanks and artillery badly damaged. Bridges to the south destroyed. Over. Freddy, this is Uncle John. Thanks. And come home safely. Well, my darling, by now you at home will have read about our sneak landing at Incheon behind the enemy's main line, and you will have figured that... Figured that the old Valley Forge did its part, but now the ship needs overhaul. So do I, and within a day or so, we'll be starting back to San Diego. Back to San Diego, which means you and the kids for good, Sue. I'm sure to be relieved as soon as we get stateside. And dearest, I'm ready for it now. Ready and eager. Tell the kids I'm on my way and how much I love my little family. Impact. It's for you personally, Admiral. Thank you. Important conference at Pearl Harbor. What is it, sir? It's a high-level conference going on at Pearl. I'm to report there at once to receive new orders. Walter, I don't want any new orders. Must be something big. Big or little, I don't want it. Conduct of operations in Korea, John. Thank you, sir. But that's behind you. Now the question is about your future. There's no question at all about that in my mind. I've got a family I hardly yes, know. Yes, uh, John. You'll get a leave. Not a very long one, but a leave. We've been discussing two jobs for you and finally decided to let you make the choice yourself. Either this or this. Gentlemen, I am highly flattered. There's a lot to be considered. Don't make a snap decision. But there's nothing to decide. As I said, I really feel You had very careful consideration. We'll meet here tomorrow at 9 a.m. Well, don't forget dinner tonight, 7.30. Huh? No, uh, Tommy, I... Uh... Place to call for Sue. The circuits were busy. Perhaps I could pick well, it up. Certainly, sure. Well, at least this way, I'll be home two weeks early. I won't be late for for our... your wedding anniversary. Don't forget, I was there. Yes, sir. Operator, this is Admiral Hoskins. I'll take my call. Oh, uh, she's expected soon. No, no, I only want to talk to Mrs. Hoskins. <laughs> Operator said Mrs. Hoskins is expected momentarily, Admiral. Thank you. May I have this waltz?
Commander. Yes, sir. Uh, it's all the excitement. Look at that uh, stack up on Matt's planes. Well, more planes than we expected arrived with wounded from Korea. We weren't prepared for this, and there are no vehicles to take them to Tripler Hospital. You see those vehicles? Yes, sir. All right, use them. But, sir, those are Admiral's cars. So they are. They aren't anymore. There. I'm sorry, fellas, but there'll be some slight delay in getting you over to the hospital. You know how it is? Somebody goofed. No vehicles. Anybody can dope off once in a while, even these air evacuation people. They're just like the rest of us. You know, maybe someday the Pentagon will invent a man who doesn't foul up. But until then, remember our slogan. Hurry up and wait. <laughs> Cigarette, Mac? You, uh, you tell us when you want to spit, and we'll do that for you, too. <laughs> it's easy for you to come slumming around us with your cornball cheer, Admiral. <laughs> Take a look at this and laugh. Gentlemen, sit down. Well, John, what's your decision? Which job will it be? Gentlemen, I'm grateful and proud to be placed in this position. I don't want either of these jobs. I really don't. There are many others who can fill them better than I can. Now, I don't know if you, Admiral, or you gentlemen, those of you who know me at all, have quite understood my ambition lately. To be honest, there have been times when I haven't understood it myself. Years ago, lying on the shattered deck of the old Princeton, I felt pretty sorry for myself. I suppose it's natural. I felt cheated and finished. And then, Lying in sick bay later, I began to understand that my injury was a challenge. A challenge not to my old personal ambition, but to a new one which had come to replace my leg. I decided to set a precedent for all handicapped, either in uniform or in civilian life. This became my ambition, my drive, my whole being. I think it's why I refused to retire. It's difficult to put into words, but... Something happened to me only a few minutes ago that made me decide to stay with the handicapped and to work directly with them. I would like to show these men that there is no limit to the life which lies ahead of them. That is why I'm turning down these jobs. And it is why I now apply for another job. One with the Pacific Division of the Military Air Transport Service, which, as you gentlemen know, is the service that takes care of these men. John, 
Either one of these jobs would have made you a big man. This makes you a great one. The job's yours. Thank you, Em. Sue, darling, I... That is, I... Don't, sailor. I know. Just this one more job. Holy Lamb has died to make them free. Our God is. 